Ken Wandiogbu, also known as Ken Art, is my guest on this episode. Ken Art is a Nigerian multidisciplinary artist. He calls his method contemporarialism, which is a fusion that is primarily centered on hyperrealism and contemporary art. In 2019, Ken was awarded the prestigious The Future Awards Africa. That same year, he was named by Guardian Life as one of the most outstanding personalities. Ken Art is a young Nigerian artist excelling regardless of several limitations. He will be taking us through his journey of becoming an award-winning artist, the powerful messages behind his art, mentoring young creatives, and much more. Let's meet Ken Wandiogbu. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Guest. My name is Ahine, I'm your host, and I have Ken Wandiobu in the studio. Yeah, he's a <laughs> multidisciplinary artist. How you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, you look nice. Great to see you, Ahine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you pronounced my name correctly, ah, so... I, yeah. had to, I had to learn it. I had to learn it. Really? really? I, I like the name, it's very unique, it's different. <laughs> now let's talk about you just came back from the abroad. Yeah. He's always there these days. <laughs> so can you tell us what's happening? You just exhibited one of your work? Yeah, I, I had a residency in London and okay. I was to create something different from what I create regularly because I create paints on canvas. Okay. But this time I was supposed to you know, create something you know, larger than life, something more like an installation. So. I think that was one of the highlights of my, me being in London because oh. I used my London experience to create this beautiful installation that was shown in London. Mm. You studied civil engineering, yes, right? Yes, yes. So how did art come in in your career? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting story. I think okay. um, every time I think about it, it inspires me to even do more because um, I used to want to be an engineer. It was, a, it was a known fact. If anything spoils at home, I'm the one going to like repair it and sort it out and fix it. Um, but I never knew I had hidden passion for art. I, used, I, I still do lots of sketches and cartoons. Okay. But I never knew it was, it was hidden until my university days when I entered civil engineering, my 100 level, when one of my friends, I was reading overnight, all through the night. I was reading for one of my papers. And one of my friends said, Ken, like, there's this dude, there's this guy painting, drawing the Dean of Unilag. That is bigger than, it's greater than anything I've ever seen. And that time I used to be the bad guy and just cartooning my lecturers and stuff. So I was like, ah, who, who is this guy? Who is this person? And I went and he took me there. And I saw one of the most beautiful artworks I've ever seen. And I got interested. I was like, what's, what's this? What's, how, how did it happen? Like, where did this come from? You, you use pencil to draw somebody to look so realistic that it looks like a photograph. Mm. And then he introduced me to hyperrealism, and that's how basically my obsession started with art. So, how did you start learning hyperrealism? Yeah, so Google. I went on Google. Really? Yeah, I went on Google, YouTube. Because I, I, at, first, at first I went to different artists. So, studios. this is you that never knew how to nah. draw. Never knew how to paint. Learning how to yeah. paint via Google. Yeah. I went to artist studio and every time I told them that I was studying civil engineering, they had this reply like, when you finish engineering, then come and do art. Like, you cannot be doing two things at a time. But then I realized I had passion for art. But then I couldn't leave engineering because then that is like what Ken, what Ken is supposed to be. Like, mm. this is his career choice. And you, I, you, you would have broken my parents' hearts. So I had to stick to engineering and figure out how to keep doing art. And at first, it stayed as leisure. Once I'm not reading, I'm drawing. But then it started growing. So when did you like decide that. to make it a career? Oh, that's an important question. That's an interesting. I think the moment I did Bonner Boys on the Spaceship album, I did like the cover art for that. Um, okay. That was a drawing. That was not a picture. And when I did that, because it was basically one of my biggest, um, one of my biggest jobs at that time. Mm -hmm. I realized that you know, I, I, I was Did really excited. Did he recognize the work? Yeah, it was mm -hmm. glue. Everybody was posting it. It was really. It was a big, yeah. It was a big deal. It was a big deal at that time because he sort of put on his Instagram page the process of the creation of the album, 
of the. And he blew the, up. Uh, blew up. It blew up at that time. Yeah. Did he was, give you a job after that? Yeah, we, we we're still friends, man. We, uh, I've been doing certain things for him and the family for a while. Okay, so and that was when you decided, Omo, oh, well, this art thing. I think this I is my calling. Like, <laughs> I was like, because before I used to draw, so I started up drawing. I started up drawing my friends. Okay. Then my friend, my, my friends were like, take, make money for me now. What's up? Make money for me. But I was like, okay, I can make like extra change and put in my pocket, and you know, I still do school. All right, so, so before Burner Boy, you, you were not really charging for arts. I was not really charging, man. I was like 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you, 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 you know, at that time, I think it was, it was really proper to mm. charge that extent. And obviously, they are for like younger people, you know, their girlfriends and birthdays. Mm. So I was, as I drew, I, I got some money that I used to like. You know, go so around and after stuff. studying engineering, civil yeah. engineering, how did you explain to your parents that you want to be an artist? I, I don't think I had to explain to them. I think I just did. <laughs> <laughs> I think while I was in school, I realized that before I leave school, I needed to be in a very comfortable place in the arts, in my art and as a career so that I'm not prompted to want to, you know, go back into engineering or go back into, you know... Why did you not want to go back to engineering? I don't want, I, I, you said you loved engineering, that was you. Yeah, I love doing engineering things, but <laughs> it's like this, the study on its own, I don't know how, it wasn't, it wasn't as captivating as when I'm studying art and I'm reading about art, and I'm reading about the things that we can create. And I realized that I, probably the reason why I went to civil engineering, of all the engineering, is because you have to create something. So I was more interested about the creation than, the, than what engineering, engineering was supposed to So you actually learned the art. So it actually learned the art. So civil engineering, architecture, they actually learned, you know, around art. And in art, you can still create, you can still build, mm. you can still, and that's what my installation in London was. I sort of like built like towers and with boxes, mm. and you know, it gave me this feeling of oh, these are blocks of wood, of of cement, yeah. and I'm sort of laying them down to create like a tower or a house. Mm. And for me, you know, that's fulfilling enough. And in 2019, yeah. you won the Future Awards for Africa Prize for yeah. Visual Arts, arts right? Yeah. Walk us through the process before getting that award and. How did you get recognized for that award? Uh, grace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful, honestly, because I, I don't think I, I worked harder than the, the nominees or the people who I know are in the art world. I just was, I don't know, I was blessed to actually have the award. But one of the main things I know that I was able to do was to trigger a lot of young artists to actually focus on art. Because I held workshops, I had live interviews, live um, tutorials, I opened WhatsApp groups, I tried to organize events, push people out there because I felt, you know, we can't just keep ignoring the fact that art is, art is diverse and a lot of uh, Nigerian youths are artists, a lot of people are art, there are, there are thousands of art, millions of artists in Nigeria, people who have done, drawn, tried and like, now nah, let me drop it and then go into other things. Because when I started, there was no dictionary I could look at to say, okay, this is how you move in the art world, or this is what you're supposed to do, right? It was a blank space. I just felt you it was just, it I yourself. just had to figure it out myself by reading about other people from different places and how they made it and how they were able to survive the whole system. Yeah. And then when I started, I thought, I was like, oh, it's working. I can get more people involved. We can get more people involved, see how we can push the art narrative, let people see it in news, let people see it in um, talk shows like this, let people, mm. let people embrace art. Uh, speaking of yeah. what that award has done for you, yeah. I'm sure that actually prompted you to create your art studio? Or yeah, yeah. Okay, can you tell us about that? So I, I started building up my Ken Wadibu studios. Okay. And, you know, we're working on a lot of projects. We've, we've done a couple of projects in London, here in Nigeria, and, you know, it's even, it, the, the award even gave me some form of relationship with certain people who I really appreciate, who stood out as mentors, who are really, you know, taking me into the right direction, you know. 
who I really come to and you know ask for So advices. when did you decide to start up Art Plan? Art Plan. Atland. Atland. Oh, Atland. oh yes, okay. yes, Atland. Oh, that's my. So Atland is my. Um, is a company I founded a while back. <laughs> so How far I, back? <laughs> 2016, I guess. Okay. 2016. Yeah, 2016. Yeah, 2016. So, I'm there. I'm taking my works to galleries, and all of them keep turning me down. Mm. And I had a couple of works, but I never had the show. And there's this collector who hit me up online and he's like, Baba, God, don't answer your prayer. He's a gallerist and he was in London and he just came back to Lagos. <laughs> Wait, he actually said, Baba, God, Baba don't, God don't answer your prayer. <laughs> it's, it's still in my head. <laughs> it can't leave my head. Baba, God, don't answer your prayer. And he actually did because everything came from that experience. He came, told me to bring my work. They, he bought my work right there. I linked, he linked me up with so many people who were like, are you kidding me? Let's do something. Let's do something. I was like, okay, let me open a company and the company starts to, you know, instead of having a solo show, let me get, let me have a group show. Let let me call my guys and let all of us have a show together that we can express this hyper-realism or this new art that we founded or not founded per se, but we are sort of like creating. And I had to create the company and you, the company sort of like were part of the sponsors yeah. of the events. So that's basically how Atlan started. Yeah. And I saw the impact of the event and how impactful it was to a lot of young artists. Mm. And I was like, I can do more. We did Artists Connect with a, I did with a friend of mine, Fala David, which was basically the, at that time, the biggest art event wow. because a lot of artists came through with their works. Mm. We did a couple of events. After that, we did, um, I did a workshop. I did Title Deeds with um, an amazing curator, Azu Wambogu. And we sort of created like a group of artists who were supposed to talk about the repartition of African artifacts because mm. these things have been stolen for a while and they've not come back. So we've been doing events back to back, back to back. So like how many them. artists do you have on the Atlan presently? Uh, it's, it's not like a label or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so it's you just like come together just when you come have... Just together and create So anybody can amazing. be a... Any artist can be a part of Atlanta? Yeah, why not? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. we, we had a group, a group um, of artists, we called it Artists Connect, and it's like a whole group of young artists who send their works online, who we... Who it's are like one. a website on... No, a WhatsApp group actually. I yeah, think you should build a website or yeah, we're working an app on it. or something. Yeah, we're, we're actually working for on easier it. Easier connection. Um, Atlant, Atlant website. We're working on it. Welcome back. We still have the multi talented <laughs> artist in the house. What I love about him is that he's not just a hyper realism artist. Yeah but there are other things he does that I don't know if he's <laughs> ready to talk about. But let's come back to your art. Yeah. You wrote that your artwork is to document, evaluate, interrogate, and challenge social, politi social political structures and issues with the aim of giving a voice to the voiceless, yeah. speaking on behalf of those who can't be heard. Yeah. Why do you have this mission? So a lot of my friends come to me and tell me some stories really touching stories and I have my own personal stories so because of that because I, I I love to talk a lot so a lot of people love to tell me things a lot and I'm a very good listener and I always give good advices I think <laughs> I think I we'll give good out. advice <laughs> so um, so my friends they tell me these things and I am back in my room just like Oh, this life. And then the next person comes and tells me the same thing. And the next person comes and tells me the same thing. And I'm like, you see, the society always speaks. There's always, you, you always see different things. You always notice different things. The society always speaks. But most of the time, we listen, but we don't want to reply. We're just, oh, okay, this is how it's happening. Yeah, we go, they all right. right. But I felt like I could make my work beautiful, attract people then give them that narrative and that conversation that mm. they go, oh, wow, oh, wow. And probably it can change their social political ideas and their views of how they see certain things. So these things sort of like triggered me to want to, you know, create works that are both amazing to me and that represent at least a conversation that can probably change people's mindset. So far, do you think arts 
is an effective tool in creating that change in yeah. the society. Yeah. So you should know that your subconscious is triggered by your visual, what you hear, what you see, okay. what you smell. You study your subconscious. It might not be really, it might not be a conscious act, but it's a subconscious act. And I feel like just hearing or just seeing something, right? Mm. You don't need to go, oh, this has changed my life, right? But subconsciously, it can have an effect in, your, in the way you think and the way you process life. So I feel like the more people see the work, the more people engage with the work, the more people understand the work, the better it sort of touches their subconscious. All right, so yeah. walk us through your production process or your creative process. When you yeah. want to make a piece, what is the first thing you do? Wow. Do you have to think about <laughs> this? <laughs> Wow, when I want to create a piece. <laughs> well, <laughs> you see, I create every day. Okay. I work every day. So I each process is day. different. So each process is, is different. It's like, okay. you see that you are part of the experience that you're like, ah, like NSAS. Ah, I went back, I say, hey. Okay, you're in Nigeria during the NSAS. Yeah, I went to protest. Oh, ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Okay. After when I came back and I, it was a lot of mess. Ah, I, then I, we went to Lekki, the that um, the Lekki Bridge. Um, Lekki Link Bridge. Link Bridge. Then we came back. Then the next day we heard that that gunshot, that massacre happened. Yeah. And it, I was so pissed and mad, and I brought my canvas and I just started creating things concerning. You know, uh, the yeah, I think the, you messed with the yeah, wrong generation. Yeah, you messed with the wrong generation, with the lady with the hand. Up. Yeah. Yeah, so most of my experiences, you know, I, I experience it myself. And then I go back and I'm angry and I talk about it. But most times, it's more like a conversation. And I write it down somewhere. Tell us about um, the artwork mm. that really took your time to create. My recent one. Okay. Johnny Mercy's. Um, so I was in London and I'm in my room. And I'm looking at all the orders I've, I've ordered, like Amazon, like all the boxes were packed up. Like if you order from Amazon, you know, here now if you order, they will bring it inside nylon or mm. a plastic bag. There, if you, if you order anything, they'll bring it in a, in a carton, in a cardboard box, right? So I had a lot of cardboard boxes in my, in, my, in my apartment that time. And I looked at it and I saw some squeeze, some bend, some press. And I was like, these guys have migrated though. And they've actually <laughs> gone through a mess because yeah. then you first create these boxes mm. that you take it from there to the pass to where they will put the item in the box right to maybe the store and the store takes it to the shipping company and the shipping company takes it through clean on land and there's a whole process of mishandling and throwing the box and so in a way the migrant experience can be sort of seen through the cardboard boxes that travel through time and I decided, you know, I can stack up these cardboard boxes to create communities of migrants, mm -hmm. right? People who have traveled far and wide, people who have journeyed, people who want to journey, people who are restricted from, from actually traveling. And I can stack them up and I can speak to people about journey mercies. How long did it take you to produce to make that? A, it was a month residency, so I had to create all the boxes, 72 of them in a month. Wow. Yeah. So it's actually a good thing that you didn't travel to Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I, that, that happened. <laughs> I created it with different colors because the colors, people of color. So why not, why not get a little bit of <laughs> African fabric in the colors? Mm. And I sort of created it. And, you know, what that, materials that was do you my love to work with? Impressive project. Me? Yeah. I stay with charcoal as a hyper-realist, mm. but I stay working with acrylic in turn and 1920. And I've really loved acrylic since then. All right, now it's about time we play some games. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I know you're going to love this one. So I'm going to display the lyrics of some songs, considering ah, that you're a music video director and you're working with several artists. What? <laughs> So this should be very easy for you. I'm not going to sing the song. I'm literally <laughs> going to call out the, the words for you. So you get the name of the song and the artist. Trust me, this is pretty easy. All right, guess the song. Let me read this out for you. 
Every day, my people day inside boss. 49 sitting, 99 standing. Every day, my people day inside boss. So, 49 sitting, 99 standing. Ha! Who does this sound like? like maybe Olamide? Every day, my people day inside boss. 49 <laughs> sitting, uh, 99 standing. Every day, my people day inside boss. 49, 49 sitting, 99. I like the line. It's, it's a very dope. Only quote. one person can give such a legendary, legendary line. Only hey, one person. They are playing with that. Living or dead. Really like Only one person. Whiskey. Living or dead. Living or uh, dead. Whiskey. Ah, wait. Fella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you some clue. <laughs> so you get No no. No, because before <laughs> I, I, I I thought it was just living. <laughs> No, I was looking at, oh I was looking for... I said, guess the name. <laughs> guess the name All of right. the song. And the artist. And the artist. Well, okay, out. I can yeah. make do with that. <laughs> okay, can we go to the next? Um, they won't build no schools anymore. They won't do, they won't be prison, prison. This is very easy. They won't they build will. no school anymore. Oh, they, they build, will. will be the yeah. prison, prison. This is so easy. If I sing it now, you they get it. They won't be no schools anymore. No. No, I'm not supposed to sing it, but they listen. Won't. They won't be no school anymore. All the build will be prison, prison. Da, 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 da. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Dead or living. Like, okay, my sister, okay, but, yeah. yeah, but, no. They won't be no schools anymore. That's like Bob Mali. Or they will be, will be. be. But Mali, oh my god! One more god. last try. Oh my god! I I, I really mess at this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. Um, they won't build no schools anymore, or, or they'll they build a prison. I mean, my with your senses, dreads, my senses are with your dreadlocks. My senses are catching. My wow! Uh, I, I just clicked it. That's Lucky Dubey. Look. You said Bob Mali, come on, no, you didn't get this right. But they, they're like, you, no, they're like, no, no, no. They're, they're not too far apart. No. They, they sound, they sound, they give almost a like no, line. No, 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 no. <laughs> Can we move to the next song, please? Okay. What kind of songs do you even listen to? Okay, let's do this. These are old, these are, okay, these okay, are old wait, legendary wait, songs. Wait. Don't let anybody push you to the wall. Now, community. Now you make us tall. Ah, ah, too fake. Don't let anybody push you up. I have it to do what? Now community, now you make us tall. Secret society, now you make us tall. Hey, I don't want to be talking like a picture What is the title of the song? I sing, I sing for all of y'all. Okay, let's move to the next, please. Fronting. Let me tell you something. No need for no long need thing. for fronting. Fronting, girl. Let me tell you something. Something. Okay, girl. so who is no this? No need for long thing. Cause you feel so good. Cause you're standing by my side. Like see me get by. I like your boy. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? What is the name of this song? I like your boy. I can make do with that. <laughs> I can't believe I had to help you out. I mean, <laughs> come on. Come on. <laughs> what do you even listen to? Uh, I would assume that you listen to music when you're painting. Yes, yes, yes. So it, what do you listen to? It depends on it, how I feel. I can listen to Westlife sometimes. Okay. You know, calm. I can listen to, I'm in a big mood. Okay. You know, because I'm feeling like I'm in a big mood. <laughs> I can listen to Blessed. I can listen to Bonner oh, Boy's okay. Twice a Store album. But at the same time, I can listen to Billie Eilish and, mm. you know, The Weeknd. Mm. And so it depends on the mood I, I feel. Sometimes, before I start work, I sort of like home a song in my mind. And then I go and look for that song and I play it. And from there, I start knowing the kind of so songs to play. So it's spiritual. So, yes, spiritual, <laughs> yes. You, you can't be walking on NSAS work and be, and be listening to okay. Westlife. <laughs> you need to listen to some fella. Yeah, you have to go with the spirit. You have to go with the spirit, man. It was really nice speaking spirit. with you on this show. <laughs> Thank I you had so much. fun. Thank you. Do you want to say anything before I wrap up? Um, yes. Okay. Art is beautiful. Art is amazing. I just wish that a lot of people can take a time to just pause and actually 
you know, enjoy it. And I know everything is fast. Instagram is fast. Images are fast. You, you look at everything too fast. And that has taken out the art in, you know, us and images and pictures. But when you see an art piece, I, I, I really, you know, I really want, you know, I really want you to just take your time and look at it. I think what you will get from an artwork, you, you, it will probably amaze you. you it will mm. blow your mind. And, and if we didn't, we didn't start, if we didn't still get anything, at least, yeah, you're enjoying what you see. Your eyes, your so, your brain is taking all that beauty in. Thank you guys for watching this episode. You know what to do? Click the like button, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm still your girl, Ahina Atta. Thank you for watching. Bye. And I'm still your guy, Ken Wadjibu. Thank you for watching. Don't try Bye. to steal my show. Uh, uh, Did I? I mean, but that's the point. I'm uh, uh, supposed uh, to be the last person <laughs> to end this show. I'm still your girl, Ahina Atta. Bye.